Hey guys, today I'm going to do a quick introduction to congestive heart failure, also just known as heart failure or CHF. And first we're going to start off with a definition so we know exactly what we're talking about. Then I'm going to go into how to recognize it, including the clinical signs and symptoms. So, heart failure is a condition in which the heart is unable to pump enough blood to meet the body's metabolic needs. So what does this really mean? Well, the heart acts as a two-sided pump. So on one side, on the left side, it pumps oxygenated blood through the systemic circulation or the circulation that goes to the, to the whole body. So from the left side, it's pumping oxygenated blood to the various tissues. And as it's used up, the blood becomes less and less oxygenated before it can return to the heart and be sent to the lungs. So it'll pass through the heart in through the uh, right atrium into the right ventricle, it passes through the different parts of the heart to go out into the lungs where it gets oxygenated and from there goes back into the left side of the heart out to the left side of the heart and back into the systemic circulation again so it's a big circle so just to reiterate it goes from the left side of the heart out into systemic circulation the various organs like the uh, muscles of the limbs and let's see good job for instance the hand to represent our limbs and our muscles and we could draw a kidney this will be our kidney various organs that need the oxygen in order to um, properly function and from there it will go back into the right atrium into the right ventricle into the lungs either lung lung either lung on each e either side and back into the left ventricle to be circulated again it's one big loop in the case of CHF we have much less blood being pumped to the rest of the body so instead of the normal amounts of um, oxygenated blood being pumped to the rest of the body we'll have very little being pumped and this causes a lot, a lot of problems so we have much less be blood being pumped out and instead of the normal amounts of oxygen being provided to the various tissues there's much less this results in a patient who seems to be uh, struggling to breathe, who's trying to breathe as much as they can in order to force as much oxygen into their blood to try and get it into their various tissues. So some of the symptoms that patients experience include uh, dyspnea, orthopnea, uh, paroxysmal, nocturnal dyspnea, as well as general fatigue. So the dyspnea uh, has dys from the Greek for bad and the PNEA comes from the Greek for breathing. So bad breathing uh, is to convey that the, these patients struggle to breathe. Orthopnea, ortho and the same P-N-E-A, comes from ortho meaning straight or standing and P-N-E-A for breathing. So they, uh, they mainly struggle more to breathe when they're not standing, so when they're lying down or when they're um, laying at an angle. 
paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea. Paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea. Uh, it's bad breathing at night that comes on very suddenly. Finally, general fatigue, as you'd imagine, comes from the fact that there's not enough uh, oxygenated blood being circulated to the tissues to meet their metabolic needs, as we described in the definition. So those were the symptoms of the patient experiences uh, during CHF. But in terms of the clinical signs or uh, conditions that the normally the physician will notice, there are a few, including tachycardia, unusual heart sounds, pulmonary rails, and diapedesis. So tachycardia comes from tachy, Greek for fast, and cardia, which is Greek for heart. So tachycardia, fast heart, meaning a fast heart rate. The heart is trying to compensate for the lack of oxygen being circulated and speeds up to pump more blood. Unusual heart sounds, unusual heart sounds are indicative of some kind of problem with the pressure system of the heart. So the, the heart isn't properly uh, shifting or moving around all of the blood between the ventricles and different parts of the heart. Pulmonary rails are sounds that are heard when the physician listens to the lungs, uh, uses a stethoscope and listens to the lungs, and they're kind of crackling, bubbly noises that happen because there's a buildup of fluid that happens in the lungs in, in CHF. Diapodesis is just a fancy way of saying sweating. So these patients are really exerting, exerting themselves in order to carry out the, their daily tasks because they're not getting enough oxygen. In addition to the physical exam signs I just mentioned, um, there's some other tests that the physician might do to double check the um, system, the elect electrical system of the heart and the various aspects of the heart. One of them is an EKG or an electrocardiogram and that is a test to test the electrical system of the heart and it can tell whether parts of the heart are thickened or cha have changed because of the CHF. Another test is a straightforward x-ray, which occur, which was another way to, to take a look at the structure of the heart to see if there's any damage to the structure of the heart. There are some blood tests to see if any hormones are being released by the heart that indicate damage. And also another commonly used test is the Ultras, um, ultrasound, which will be used to measure the velocity of the blood as it moves through the heart to see if it's slowing down, uh, and that can tell a lot about the type of heart failure that these patients are experiencing. I'll go into the way, the mechanisms as to how these symptoms occur, the symptoms I described occur in patients, in my next video on the pathophysiology of heart failure. Thank you for watching.